What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got a pretty awesome unboxing here. I recommend staying tuned because I've got a couple books in here I definitely think you should be putting on your watch list, so stay tuned. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. Like I said, I've got bunch of great books here a couple that I think you should be putting on your watch list you can see I also updated my my wall back here I've got some Batman books up there part of that is because I have a couple awesome Batman books in here too I'm gonna talk a little bit about a few things I had some people ask some questions about the Gerber photo journal so I was gonna talk about that with a couple of these books but let's start let's start with this one here so this is just a single book in here. Uh, this one is a Golden Age book. Uh, this one I just I bought because I just I think the cover's cool, <laughs> and uh, that's that's part of buying Golden Age books. I mean, I've had a few people ask about that uh, because Golden Age can be a little bit intimidating. It covers a really large time period. There's a lot of variety of books in there. Some people break it up between golden age and atomic age but in general it's just one large period sometimes atomic age is used just because the content tended to change a little bit more uh, during that time period kind of in the 50s in the uh, up until the silver age but this one is from 1950 and it's just like i said it's a book that i just i felt was I feel like this book is a little too cheap for just kind of how cool of a cover it is. It's a Batman book. It's not really like a key or anything. But when you're talking about Golden Age, a lot of it really does come down to cover content. And part of that is just because those first appearances, they just get so expensive. And there really aren't all that many of them out there. There aren't a lot of those first appearances. And so I think people just tend to start going for other things. They kind of like you, you make other keys in that time period and a big part of that is cover content. And so this one here is a Batman book. It's a pretty nice grade and it's Batman number 57. And I just thought this was a cool book with, you know, you've got the, the bat plane on there. It's got the golden age yellow cover. The yellow covers always really pop. The back of it looks real nice. You often have these ads for the, uh, for the BB guns on the back. And yeah, I mean, 5.5, five. just a really nice presenting copy for 1950. You know, there's, there's like some chipping and things along the edge there. And then on the spine, the spine looks pretty nice. A little bit of staple rust maybe there. But in general, a, a, you know, a nice presenting book, a nice looking 5.5. Five. Do I think it could get better? I don't know, maybe, but would it be worth cracking out and sending in probably not I, I don't know if it's worth it for what could potentially be maybe like a half a grade something like that but I just I thought it was a cool book so I decided to pick it up and I, I'll quickly mention these these Gerber photo journals just because I've had some people ask about them when I've shown them in the past and basically the way they work is I marked the page with that book on it and so you can go to, there's two, of, there's two of these books. This one is A through J. You can see here, you've got Batman, you've got all these Batman covers. And then over here, right here, it's Batman number 57. And so you've got the cover there and it says 159-57 underneath. And so then you would go uh, later on, a little later on in the book. And it's, it's always, it's generally either on the same page as those covers or at the end of the, that list of covers and it's gonna have a list of all the books and it'll have a few columns next to it. And see if you go down to, let's see, 57 is right here. So if you go down to 57, see it says February or March and it has 1950 there. So it's saying it was February slash March of 1950. And then it has a 160 and a four next to it. And so the 160, it's kind of useless. <laughs> it's this, uh, this thing at the top called RVI, uh, right there, which is like relative value index. It's like the value of the book compared to other books. They are not accurate. Don't trust them. You know, they're, they're pretty generic. I wouldn't trust using those now. But the thing next to it is a little more useful. 
And at the top, it's called SI, which is the scarcity index. And for this book, it was a four. And a four means that it's average scarcity for the time period. If you go a little earlier in the book, they have a little table here that talks about these uh, scarcity SI numbers. You can see a four average scarcity. The index number indicates that there are about 1,000 to 2,000 existence. And then you have less than average, uncommon, scarce. And it gives approximate numbers of those books. Now, that isn't, you can't, you've got to kind of take those statements with a grain of salt. Again, I call it kind of like relative scarcity. And so whether there are still 1,000 to 2,000 of those books available or out there, I can't say for sure. It might be a lot less than that by now because when these numbers were done, it was like 40 years ago and a lot of things can happen to books in that time period, floods, fires, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so that's why I actually, I like using the CGC index at this point to get a better idea for the approximate numbers that are out there. Now, not all the books are graded, so yeah, you definitely can't assume that, but that can, it can be something that gives you just a general idea of how hard or easy it is to come across this book. And as a four, you know, it's moderately difficult. It's a golden age book. So they're not going to come up all the time, but you can find them. And so that's just how, that's how those books work. Uh, the other book that I have, I think has very similar numbers in it actually, but I'll go over that one at the end because that is the biggest book and I'm going to save that one uh, to last. All right. So next I'm going to get into this one, which has three books in it. I don't think any of these are golden age. Let's see, I made a little note there. No, I think I've got two bronze and a silver book in here. And this is the one that I, it has a couple books that I definitely think you should be looking out for. Now, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say the prices right now are, are great for them, but we have been seeing prices coming down on a lot of books recently. So to me, it's definitely worthwhile to put these on your watch list. Uh, just because I think that they are, in general, great potential future books. Uh, they're solid keys regardless. And so definitely worthwhile to look for if you see prices coming down and if you see a good deal on a book. Uh, because for me, that's why a lot of times I'm buying these books, whether they're going up or down, if I see a great price relative to current selling prices. That's when I am going to pull the trigger on a book like that. That's generally how I buy most books. So let's go over the first one here. So this one is one that I think is, it's, this is one of those books that I would be putting on that watch list. Lower grades have been coming down some, but the higher grades are holding pretty strong right now. And this is Marvel feature number one. This is an 8.5, which is actually a pretty nice grade for this book, 1971, so early uh, Bronze Age. And this is the first appearance of the Defenders. And so you've also got the, the run that came a little later, which is just titled the Defenders, but this is the first time you have them. The prices really drop quickly for uh, Marvel Feature 2 and 3, their second and third appearances. But first appearance is actually a, a relatively pricey book. But like I said, in the lower grades at least, it has been coming down. So it's definitely a book that I would be watching because I could easily see... Marvel bringing this team or some version of this team back because they're already bringing back Daredevil and there's rumors that they might be bringing back some of the other members of that team from Netflix as well. And so definitely something to keep an eye out. And I, I just, it's a cool cover, it's a cool key. It's a thicker book. So you can see it's, uh, it's a square bound book. It's a little thicker book. Uh, so again, that often makes these a little harder to get in high grade. You'll see things like spine splits, that kind of thing. I had a lower grade copy previously that definitely had a, a decent spine split on it, but 8.5 is a pretty nice copy of this book. So definitely one to uh, to be on the lookout for. All right. Now the next one I'm going to talk about, this isn't one that I would necessarily say to be on the lookout for. I just think it's a cool cover and a cool book. And this is a nice high grade and I felt like the price was pretty good. So I decided to buy it. And this is Savage Sword of Conan, number one. Just an awesome Conan Red Sonia cover. And I just, I think it's a cool cover. There isn't really anything overly key about it other than the fact that it's an issue number one, 1974. It's not the first appearance of Conan or anything that's in Conan the Barbarian, uh, number one, but it's a pretty 
pretty awesome co uh, cover. It's also got John Buscema, Neil Adams art on the inside. Um, but, but yeah, nine six white pages. I mean that back is super white. Now it is the larger magazine size. I've shown this before, just kind of to get the comparison of the size. See here, it's a little longer. It's a little wider. You know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they're, they're a little bit more of a pain to store. That's one thing I don't like as much about the, the magazine-sized books. But, I mean, look at that cover art. It's awesome. And I just thought 9.6 felt like a good price. Decided to pick it up. Now, the last book here, and then I've got this other box here that has the, the biggest book uh, from this unboxing. This is one I've talked about this book a number of times. I... I don't know how many copies I have right now. Three or four, something like that. I think it is an awesome book. I think this event is going to happen. I think this is a key that is definitely worth looking for. Now, again, it's a book that it's come down maybe a little bit, uh, but the higher grades, again, have retained pretty solid prices. Lower grades coming down a touch, uh, but that's when you want to start watching these. You don't necessarily want to pull the trigger right away, but watch them to see if they come down a little more. And that is X-Men number nine. This is a 5.5. If you watched my unboxing video that I sent, I did previously where I, I sent one into CGC, I got back an a uh, 8.5 of, <laughs> of this book, which I was really excited about. But 5.5, still nice presenting copy. It's definitely got some damage up on the top there. But this is the first meeting of the Avengers and the X-Men. I also just, I think it's a really cool cover. I, there's a few of these covers where these, they're like split events where you have something going on on the bottom and different thing going on, on the top. I like those covers, I think they look pretty cool. Uh, so I just think it's a cool cover. It's uh, I think an event that will happen at some point. We will see an Avengers team crossover with the X-Men at some point. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but we now have the mutant gene in the MCU. So it's all, the, the, the groundwork is all being laid for that. So I just think it's a cool book. Definitely one that I would be keeping a lookout for. Like I said, prices haven't come down that much on it, but they're starting to come down a little bit, and so just put it on your watch list. If you see a good deal, pick it up. All right, now before I get to the last book, I have this one package that I'm gonna open here. Uh, and so this was actually from, from Shortbox, and I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I was watching one of their, they were doing a live sale, and they, uh, they were asking trivia questions and if you got the question like it was basically whoever answers first gets a, a t-shirt and I think they were they were leftover t-shirts from uh, yeah from the collector's summit that's what it was and so the question that I got asked or, or that they asked was what was Stanley's first uh, work in, in a comic and it's Captain America number three which is an awesome cover by the way and so then they gave this free shirt so here we go so you got short boxed and then they've got Kind of this cool like golden age it, it just feels like a you know like a golden age throwback where you've got an octopus grabbing all kinds of different stuff and so i just thought this was uh this is a cool cool shirt and i will i, I love t-shirts i'm not wearing i'm doing sweatshirt right now but if you watch my channel a lot you know i wear a lot of different t-shirts and so i will definitely uh wear free t-shirts that i get so but yeah Short box. thank you for the shirt thank you for doing the free giveaway uh yeah go check out their their app and uh, they've got some awesome books always on there. And they've definitely been uh, showing up at a lot of the different cons and everything. And they, they always have a, a really cool setup that I've seen uh, from videos and everything that people have been posting uh, when they're at those cons. All right, now, last book here. This is definitely a keeper book for me. This is by far the biggest book that I'm opening here. And this is another Golden Age Batman book. I mentioned I had a couple of them and I had the Batman number 57 and I've got this one. And this is a book that I had been trying to get for a while. And I had, right before this one came up for sale, like a couple days prior, I sold a pretty big book. I sold my uh, 80 Hulk number five. And so I had a decent amount of, of uh, cash available <laughs> to be able to buy uh, something and so I ended up uh, this one came up for sale I bought a couple things that I'll do in another unboxing from from Super World when they were out at San Diego Comic-Con they had a couple live sales so a couple things from them and then I bought this book and 
All right, this was part of a pop-up Elite Comics 11 live sale. And like I said, I have been looking for this book for quite some time. And there's actually a uh, kind of a companion book to it up there somewhere. So I'm gonna take a quick look at it first because I haven't, I, I mean, I watched it on video. I didn't really get to see it up close. So this is Detective Comics number 122. This is the first cover appearance of Catwoman. Awesome yellow cover. You got her just taking out Robin on the front, which I think is just a great cover. And so the reason I say I have a companion book for this one is that, uh, where is it? This book right here, that Batman number 42 with Catwoman on the cover there, uh, that is her first cover appearance in the Batman title. This is her first cover appearance overall. And so, you know, they mark it on the on the book there, or on the label there. So first Catwoman cover, which I think is awesome. It's also crazy that it took until 1947 for her to appear on the cover, because her first appearance is in Batman number one, which I believe is 1940. So seven years for her to appear on the cover, which I think is just nuts. Um, but but yeah, I, her, her costume is much better. This is more of the traditional Golden Age costume uh, that we're used to. Uh, much better than her first costume that she had in Batman number three, which I also showed in a different unboxing uh, when I did a flip through of Batman number three. Uh, but yeah, definitely excited to get this one. Definitely one of the books that's going onto my keepers list. Uh, it will, you know, it's going to pair nice with that one up there, and so I'm real excited to get this one. I might even swap it out for one of these, <laughs> one of these books so it's up there together. But but yeah, really happy with this one. Detective Comics number one twenty two in a four five. Picked it up, like I said, on an Instagram live sale through Elite Comics 11. Um, I've had people often ask, you know, where can they find these books, this kind of thing. And that's what I said. Instagram is a great place to buy books. I mean, this is Detective Comics 122. Buying that on Instagram. You can find some awesome Golden Age books on Instagram, some rare books there. The stuff I often buy from Superworld is often kind of like also often rare Golden Age books. I'm going to do that in one of the other unboxings. Um, but, yeah, super happy with this. Got the fun Baby Ruth ad on the back. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Got a couple books, like I said, that I think are pretty good options, at least to be keeping on your watch list right now. We've got X-Men number nine and Marvel feature number one. I think both those events, we're gonna get the Defenders in the future, I think in the MCU, probably on something like Disney Plus again. And I think we're gonna get the crossover of X-Men and the Avengers at some big event in the future in the MCU, whether it's gonna be one of the Avengers movies or something, I don't know. But I think it's gonna be a big event. I'm excited for it. And so I think those are two books you definitely want to be at least looking out for. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.